in the solemn court, a hearing was being held. A female prisoner in an orange prison uniform suddenly stood up and launched a crazy attack on the defense lawyer next to her. Before the people around could react, a big bailiff rushed up and tried to subdue him, but failed. Then three bailiffs took action at the same time to force the woman to calm down and sit on the ground obediently. What's going on? Isn't it too crazy to beat your own lawyer in court? However, after listening to the horrific crimes committed by the woman against others, you will find that this is not a big deal at all. And no words are enough to describe this evil and dark woman. Hello everyone, I am Zhao Bei. Welcome to watch the real case. This case took place in a small town called Green Bay under Brown County, Wisconsin, where about 110.000 people live. In February 2022, one cold morning, a mother living in this house in Green Bay found something she would never forget at home, her son's head. The poor mother was almost frightened to death. She screamed hysterically and called the police. After receiving the call, a large number of police officers rushed to the crime scene to investigate. The victim was 25 years old, born in 1997, and was a young man who was neither ambitious nor responsible. He worked in a small company run by his father and grandfather. He usually liked to play games and cooperate in some wood carvings. It is said that he was quite talented in carving, perhaps because of his comfortable life. Shade developed some bad habits as an adult and liked to take all kinds of things that hurt his body. Although these bad habits cannot be the reason for his brutal murder, they are definitely closely related to his subsequent unfortunate experience. Around 3 o'clock in the morning on February 23, 2022, Tara, the scared mother, was awakened by the sound of the basement door closing. She knew that her son always liked to whisper with his girlfriend in the basement bedroom recently. So she decided to get up and check. After coming to the basement, he found that the lights outside were on, but no one looked around. A relative called his son's name several times, but there was no response. So Tara turned and left. At this time, he noticed that there was a large bucket at the bottom of the stairs, covered with a beach towel. Tara found it very strange, because nothing had been stored in that place before. So he walked over curiously and lifted the towel to see what was inside. As a result, he was horrified to find his son's head. His eyes were wide open, staring lifelessly ahead, and his face full of fear was covered with blood. The police checked and found that in addition to the human head bucket, there were also two knives and some human organs inside. Such a bloody scene was very unusual. In order to eliminate possible dangers in the house, they urgently searched the entire house. After entering Shad's bedroom, everyone was shocked. They realized that it was the first scene of the crime. The murderer may have just cut his aorta during the murder. The whole room was full of blood. Whether it was the bed, the floor, the wall, or even the bathroom, it was all bloody. Strangely, after searching the entire house, the investigators did not find the rest of Shad's body. Where did the murderer hide his remains? Why was there only a human head left? Tara told the investigators that his son's life was simple. He had no bad friends and it was unlikely that he had any enemies. He couldn't understand who would hurt him in such a cruel and ruthless way and cut him into pieces. The only clue he could provide was that between 2.30 and 3 o'clock in the morning of that day, there was a loud door slamming in the basement of his home. And then there was the sound of a car starting outside the house. After being awakened by these sounds, he subconsciously thought that the person who closed the door should be his son's girlfriend Taylor. But when he thought about it, he felt something was wrong. Taylor usually didn't get up so early. The last time Tara saw Shad alive was two nights before the incident. Around 9.30 p.m. on February 21, when he seemed to be rushing out to meet a friend, although it was not mentioned who she was going to meet, Tara guessed that she would most likely lose her girlfriend Taylor. The investigation found that the frightened girlfriend Taylor was 24 years old and was also a native of Green Bay, Wisconsin. She had been in society since she was 16 years old. She had been married to a man named Warren for several years and had a son. There were rumors that the child was not Warren's because Warren had been in prison before Taylor became pregnant. Taylor's fate was rather rough. He was abandoned by his biological mother when he was very young. His biological father was not a person either. He often abused him, 
causing him to have major mental and behavioral problems and leaving a lot of criminal records during his growth. In 2020, Taylor attacked the police because he was taking bad things and alarmed them, then tried to escape, and was finally arrested and sentenced to probation. The scope of activities was limited to home and work, but she secretly cut off the ankle monitor and wandered around, although Shad wished that he and Taylor were in a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. He was actually just a third party. Taylor often went in and out. Shadgar scared his mother Tara vaguely remembering that he drove a van. Considering that Taylor might be the last person to see Shadgar, the police decided to start with him. Two investigators immediately drove to his house to find out the situation. There was a van parked in front of Taylor's house that matched the description of his scared mother. They vigilantly checked around the car body and looked into the car through the window for a long time. Taylor, who was staying in the house, saw this scene and took the initiative to come out. At that time, he was wearing black sweatpants and a matching hoodie, which were covered with dried blood. The investigators asked him if he knew why they came. Taylor calmly replied that it was because he destroyed the ankle monitor. They couldn't tell whether he was really unaware or pretending to be confused. So they took him back to the police station for interrogation. When entering the interrogation, the investigators noticed that in addition to the blood on his clothes, Taylor's hands and arms were covered with cuts and scratches. When asked how these wounds came from, he explained that he did it on purpose, since the police had not yet obtained relevant evidence to prove that he was the murderer. They could not refute his statement. Next, they began to ask him about Shad's murder. Taylor did not hide his relationship with Shad, but he insisted that he knew nothing about Shad's death. The investigators asked him if the van at the door was his. And he lied that it was not. But he had one. But in fact, Taylor did not have a friend. After repeated questioning, he finally admitted that he had driven the van from Shad's house back to his home in the early morning of the 23rd. Although Taylor repeatedly denied that he was the murderer, the investigators applied for a search warrant as quickly as possible and prepared to conduct a comprehensive search of his apartment and van. Finally, Taylor admitted that he was scared to death. When the police asked why he did this, Taylor replied with a mocking tone that you really know how to ask questions. Next, he described in detail the cause of the whole incident. Taylor said that at 9.30 p.m. on February 21, he, Shad and another friend bought those things and went back to his apartment to eat. The three stayed together until noon the next day. The friend didn't want to leave alone anymore, so he and Shad continued to smoke. And after smoking one, they switched to another. When he was unconscious, the two drove back to his home and did bed exercises together. In order to pursue excitement, they decided to go later. Scared took out two large chains and tied them around his neck. Then jumped on the bed, face down and asked Taylor to help pull back. Since the two often played standing before, Taylor didn't think there was anything wrong. He sat on Shad and pulled the chains tightly. After a while, he saw blood starting to flow from the corners of Shad's mouth. But he didn't stop. About 35 minutes later, Scared was completely motionless. Investigators asked her why she didn't stop immediately when she saw her boyfriend vomiting blood. Taylor said that he was in an extremely excited state at the time of the incident and couldn't stop at all. There was only one idea in his mind. That is, to pull hard and see what the consequences would be. When he recounted these plots, his tone was very calm, without regret or tears, as if he had just slapped a mosquito to death. Later, watching Shad's body slowly change, Taylor said that his consciousness gradually became blurred and he had no memory of what happened afterwards. Ironic, despite repeatedly stating that she had partial amnesia, Taylor finally gave an accurate account of what happened to Shad after his death under the investigator's questioning. She said that she did not choose to leave immediately after seeing her boyfriend die, but continued to stay at the scene and play with the body. Then, bit by bit, Taylor mentioned a lot of particularly bizarre and disgusting details, which cannot be repeated here. Investigators believe that he dared to be so specific in order to make people think that he was mentally ill and thus get a lighter sentence. He also said that he originally wanted to take the frightened head away. But then forgot. He thought it would be difficult for the police to find all the organs because he packed them separately at the time and threw them in any corner after packing them. But one of the legs was still in his van. When asked what he used to dismember Shad, 
Taylor said he used a kitchen knife. Most kitchen knives are not useful. But the one for cutting bread is the most useful. Because it has serrations on it. This knife is placed in a bag in the basement. Together with some of Shad's human tissue. Following his tip. Investigators found a leg and several bags of body parts in the van. Including a clay pot filled with human tissue. Didn't Taylor say that it would be difficult for them to find all of Shad's organs? This was not the case. Investigators found all the parts of Shad's body in a plastic bucket in his van as well as several kitchen knives. Back to the interrogation. When Taylor mentioned that he forgot to take Shada's head away, he seemed to be anxious about this mistake. He explained that he had planned to clean up the mess at the crime scene. But because he spent several hours decomposing it, he had separated all the parts and moved them to the van, which had exhausted all his energy. And he really didn't want to move. He also said that killing Shada was not intentional. But he accidentally went too far when he was in love. Because the murderer Taylor personally admitted the fact of murder and gave a complete confession. The case was quickly solved. A week after the incident, the police directly charged him with three counts, including first degree murder. On March 1, 2022, Taylor appeared in the Brown County Court for the first time to participate in the hearing. Since he was charged with assaulting a police officer when he killed Shada. It was equivalent to the best crime committed during his sentence. The judge angrily set a bail of 2 million US dollars to ensure that he could not afford it and stayed in prison waiting for trial. Before the trial began, the local police needed to collect as much evidence as possible to rule. Taylor and his team checked his and Shada's social media accounts and found that a few days before the incident, Scared had posted a message on Facebook, which said how could such a thing happen to someone? How could you do this? Goodbye. I don't like this place anymore. The police still cannot determine what Shada mentioned in the article. But it is certain that the person he is referring to is Taylor. He may have witnessed Taylor doing something very terrible to others. And it is not ruled out that Taylor murdered another person in the same way. This can also reasonably explain his motive for murdering Shada. Unfortunately, the only person who knows the exact answer is scared, and he is no longer alive. The subsequent police investigation also found that Taylor was very interested in a serial killer in Wisconsin named Jeffrey Dahmer, who was imprisoned for murdering 17 men. Taylor and Jeffrey's modus operandi are exactly the same, strangling people and then dismembering them. Taylor not only stored photos of Jeffrey at home, but also spent countless hours watching his crime documentaries online. Investigators suspected that Taylor was either obsessed with Jeffrey and wanted to imitate him or secretly contacted Jeffrey, at the instigation of this person. When the criminal attended the plea hearing, Taylor pleaded not guilty in court. However, during the interrogation, in front of the investigators, he had personally admitted to the murder of Shada, and he even fantasized about escaping punishment. It was incredible. The first trial date given by the court was originally scheduled for this year. February 14, 2023. But Taylor's lawyer filed a motion to the judge to suspend the trial because the defense needed more time to collect evidence and find professionals to evaluate Taylor's mental state to ensure that he met the conditions for trial. The local judge also generously agreed to the lawyer's request. But just as the judge said yes, Taylor suddenly did something that shocked everyone, which is the scene at the beginning of the video. He suddenly stood up and attacked his defense lawyer's face with his right elbow. Fortunately, before the lawyer was hurt, the bailiffs rushed up immediately. One of the bailiffs managed to push Taylor to the ground, but was fiercely resisted. Later, two other bailiffs joined in and completely subdued him in a short time. After this incident, Taylor's lawyer filed a motion with the court, asking the judge to remove himself from the case. He didn't want to be Taylor's lawyer anymore. No matter who will be Taylor's lawyer in the future, he must be prepared to be beaten first. Because facing Taylor is much more difficult than facing the jury and the judge. Given that he has beaten his defense lawyer, it may not be so easy to find another lawyer to help him fight the lawsuit later. The trial has not officially started yet, but it is basically certain that Taylor will never be able to leave prison. He should be grateful to be tried in Wisconsin. Because the state has not executed the death penalty for more than 150 years. And he will be sentenced to life at most. Regardless of whether Taylor is mentally ill or not, 
A person like him who is emotionally unstable and violent is definitely not suitable to return to normal society. This case seems to have been handled fairly. But in fact, the pain left to Shad's family can never be erased. Especially his mother, who had to see her son die and see the mutilated state of his son. No matter how much psychological preparation she put in, it is impossible to heal the huge pain in her heart.